Oh man, look at that size of the canvas we're gonna work on today. My good, well tonight anyway. Look at this monster size canvas. It's almost as big as I am. Welcome to Paint With Josh, everybody. You can see just how sweaty I am already just setting up this humongous canvas. And uh, man, it's hot here in Las Vegas. So we have our Indian yellow covering the top. We have our sap green covering the middle. And then we have our Prussian blue covering the bottom. And guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna do a three portal painting. It's gonna be awesome. So. You guys can go over, you can find this painting in my Etsy store. Go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com and search for 773. That's this one. So we're going to do like a green, like a greenish, yellowish, bluish one. I have a green one up here and a blue one down there. So let's do the yellow one first. You guys are going to tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? Because I got to know. We'll go through our colors that we have right here. Our Indian yellow that we've already used. Our sap green. And our Prussian blue. Uh, the... Cad yellow was a drag through, that was a mistake, so don't worry about that. Indian yellow, sap green, uh, Prussian blue, and then we have a little pile of white. We're gonna see if we can do this whole thing. I probably, probably have to get some more white out of the box, but until then, let's see what we can do with it, right? So we're gonna take our eight inch cake pan, and I have the, the paint with Josh one, and then just a spare one, right? So you get these at like the Dollar General store for like a buck. They're maybe two, three bucks. I've seen them at Michael's, you can get like little six inch ones. These are eight inch ones. And uh, we're going to get a little of the yellow and a little of our, our white on the brush. So it's both the colors. And it's really going to stand out. So this is one of the 8-inch ones. We're literally going to take it and we're just going to make a little portal, a little eclipse right out of the whole thing. And you've seen how we do these. We've been doing these a lot. So let's go around and see just how gorgeous this yellow is going to be. Oh, my. Very light little touch around the side. Just like that. Wrap it around. And that's the best part about these eclipses is they don't have to be the most perfect circle because you're going to take it and mess it up anyway, right? And take it, we're going to pull it out at little places, making it a little longer in certain bits than it should be, right? A little bit shorter in some spots. I like to keep the, I like to keep the tin there because it helps you not go inside your circle, right? You can come right up to your tin, pop it down like that, and have these very cool little bits and again we like to make them a little bit longer a little bit shorter in some places and not in other places all depends let's go back and get some more we gotta have our paint within reach so sorry my big head has to get in the way right sorry i like to uh i gotta have everything within reach for this one so we're gonna come back in here pop it little things in maybe just using the corner of the brush and then so uh, every so often we just shoot just a ray of sunshine out of there right that's all it is it's just a bit of sunlight escaping around the edge of our moon's shadow, our eclipse. So little things, popping them out very lightly, going around the edge. And just like that, get them to extend out into that greenish, yellowish color that's out there. It's all blending. It's all gorgeous. And we're just pulling them away like little hands of a clock, right? Nothing too crazy. Every so often you got to make your little spikes come out. At least I like to make them like that. Come down here, do this guy a little bit. A couple little spikies. Like he's wearing a he's wearing a choke collar, right? one of those big old spike collars, you know what I mean? Crazy big collar on this guy. He's got total confidence. There we go. Just like that, going out, going around. And now we'll see what we look like. Guys, are you ready to see it? One, two, whoop. look at that. Oh, that's wicked. That's wicked. Now I'm gonna put the yellow one over here. I don't want to swap it. I'm going to use the clean one for the blue section down there. And just like that, get this really cool little aurora blasting out from behind our, our little uh, lunar eclipse there. Total eclipse. Just a total eclipse of the art. Remember, guys, you're going to be able to name this painting towards the end of the stream. So start coming up with a name. And it's going to have three portals, all different sizes, all different uh, colors. It's going to be awesome. There we go. Just pulling it down. It's the best part about these oil paints. You can adjust and pull in different ways and shape it. We want it a little bit brighter in here, so we take it like this, and we're just pulling it out, getting real close, extending it, not having to do too much work. Right? The oils just do it for us. That's the best part about them, for me anyway. That's the best part about them, that wicked cool little shine that you get to get out of there. right? And they just blend away so nicely, too. Okay, let's not do too many details in there. We got a whole three of these to do with a bunch of scenes to get in there. So it's not just about doing an eclipse tonight. It's about doing a scene within the eclipse. All right, see so the eclipse goes over. It's December 21st, 2012, and the Mayans predicted the eclipse opens 
a portal straight through the sun. And all we can do is see this gorgeous little seascape out there. It's going to be fantastic. Just going to be fantastic. So let's get a little, let's do a little ocean scene up here on the top one. We're going to grab our brush and just like this, going to pop in a little bit. And even though it's sort of bright, it's obviously not as bright as the yellow and white on our brush, right? So we can still have it remain a night scene and not even call it a daytime scene. Look at this little bit of moon. Just push flat, rotate the bristles. This is gonna be a cool TikTok to make, I'm telling you. When I finally get around to editing this long, big long video, then uh, it's gonna be, we're gonna be able to pull a bunch of cool little things from this one. All right, let's see here. Let's come in, let's grab up our fan brush. We're gonna be rocking and rolling through this scene because we've got three scenes to do and they're all gonna get more and more intricate. So come in here with our white and yellow, same little colors, we're only using the same colors, right? So I'm gonna pop in our little bit of cloud back here. It's just a soft little guy hanging out way off in the distance, right? I'm gonna take our one inch brush, nice dry, clean one inch brush. And with the amount of what, right? We already put the paint up there, that's our P1. So what's our P2, guys? Anybody know? I'll give you a shout out right now. Just real quick, let's see. Pressure, that's it. GNS Farms, I know I already follow you. Cosmic Lighthouse knows, K Jones knows. Pressure, guys, pressure, pressure. Right? They all depend on the pressure. The harder we pull or push, the more it's gonna blend in with the darker color underneath it. And even though it's just that yellow and the black base color of the canvas, it's still, you gotta work on that pressure. Just so soft, blend that sucker away, just like that. Very cool. Okay, let's come back in here. We'll grab up a little bit more of that same color, a little yellow, a little bit of our white pile over here. Just mix them down onto the brush. A little bit of paint, don't need a whole lot. Now, for these little seascape guys, I love coming out here and we'll do like this little bit of our ocean scene way out there, right? So we'll pop just a little straight line in right underneath our clouds. Dang, that's our little bit of our horizon. So simple and easy to do, right? And then all we have to do is come back and fill it in, but not overfill it. You don't want to overfill. If you fill it too much, what happens? It spills out, right? You don't need that. Or if you fill it too much, it's all going to start to look like the same color. And that's not what you want either. So take our one inch brush again, coming in here, sliding this one out. If this one doesn't sell, which I, I don't think it will, I'm going to take it to the gallery and uh, display it. So this one's got to be one of the best ones that we ever do. Right? And we're doing it live in front of you in less than 90 minutes is my goal. That's the goal. Less than 90 minutes. There we go. Come down, come up. There it is. I want my little peeker right there. We normally do it with the brush. This time I decided I'd do it with the knife. No big deal. Either which way, it all works the same. Right, come back in here. Slide our little bit of water. Just connecting little bits, leaving little dark areas. That's all we need. Just a little touch. A little peek, a little peek leaving the underside very dark. Got to have it dark underneath here. That's our little separator, right? So let's load up some more paint. Come back in with our white and our yellow. Got to mix them both on the brush. Have them both on the brush at the same time. Same brush. Haven't washed anything yet, right? Let's say we come up here and we just pop in our bit of our wave like that. And then this guy will come down, slide across. You guys know he's going to hit our little angle over here. And we're going to hit the angle coming on the way back, right? Looks like a little like a dolphin or a whale, I like, trust me, we're not, we're not painting a dolphin or a whale. We're painting an ocean scene. Okay, here comes our eye of our wave. Now it looks less like a whale. Right, then we're gonna take our bit right here and start to curl over. Just like this. Curling over, coming down. Rotating down, right? You gotta have that round look though. Remember, we're only using one dang color. Well, yellow and white. And we're gonna turn our brush. See how my handle was over here? Now it's over here. Turn the brush this way, start to pull out that way. Building it out. And now, now we make a big decision. Do we keep it inside? Do you keep it inside the portal or do you let it spill out into something else? You know what I mean? That's totally up to you guys. Does it spill out and then continue on down? Does it continue falling? What happens to your little bit in your mind, right? A little bit of our brighter color. Ooh, we're just right up to the side, guys. Again, is it going to rotate out? We're going to have to find out later. Let's come in here. We're going to start to slide back. 
just little bits, grabbing our white line, and then we're sliding it back to that last little bit. And then poof, we meet up with our little angle up there, right? Very cool. What do you guys think so far? Oh, that's so cool how it's coming together. Right there. All right, so we want it to spill out. Well, you guys want it to spill out. I think it's up to me what we want it to do, right? Let's see. Especially since it hasn't been purchased and it's got to come to the gallery with me. Right, now we always talk about that little mustache that we make right here. Same thing, mustache here, then we come down. You start to slide your wave down that way. It all depends on what you want to do first. I mean, there's ten. you can go 10 different thousand ways. Here we go. Just like that, swipe it over, and then we start coming down, right? Got to bring it down this way, leaving a little bit of darkness. Slide it to the edge, slide it out. A little bit of dark around the side, and then just, I mean, we can just continue on. We're using the same color, look at this. Sliding it down, right? All becomes part of our wave. But where's our little bit of foam? That's probably gonna land back in here. And slide it down, that'll connect with our piece right there. Literally start sliding it up rotating not wanting to hit the eye of our wave just yet so let's take a little let's take a little second right you can literally they just fall out of the brush so easily let's come in into our little eye just take that little eye and just try to make it a little bit softer a little bit softer let it blend out there we go just like the lights trying to shine through and what have we kept guys what have we kept underneath that dark line what do we call that dark line josh has a very specific name for that dark line does anybody know what it is i'll give you a follow if you know if you know what that dark line is called, let's see, could the water go up and, or go out and up? Oh, like floating up, dark separator, Kay Jones knows right there, separator, travel nurse, Destiny Renee knows, I already follow all of you guys, dark separator from Bun Bun, all right, Bun Bun, you're getting a follow, just like that, right? You have to keep that dark separation because we're using the same color, all right, just this white and yellow against a yellow and black background, right? Just a transparent yellow background over a black canvas. So we're only, if you let all these colors run together, it's gonna be indecipherable what's what, right? So you have to keep that little dark separator in there. And now we have to keep a second dark separator between these colors and the brightest part of our eye, right? So as we come in here and we start sliding up, we go back and we rotate and we come up. Canvas is bouncing a little bit, there we go, come up. Getting taller and taller and taller over and onto this side, right? Our, our wave starts building itself. And then we come down, riding our little wave down, just like that. Come in here. These very cool little bits of water. It's, it's going to be so neat. This one is going to be so neat, right? Come in here with our softer brush, a little one inch brush, right? People ask me all the time, what brush is that? I assume they're asking about this brush. Or, you know, like if you're going to ask a question, you got to tell, hey, when you're making the waves soft, you know, about halfway through the video, what, what brush are you using with a white handle? And I go, oh, okay, it's the one inch brush. But we've used like four different, five different brushes already. So if you go, what brush is that? I go, oh, at what point were you watching? I don't know where, where to answer your question from. You know what I mean? Very cool, guys. Look at this, just sliding out so soft. Now, come in here, just very, very lightly, start to rotate it up, just like there was a little circle. You see how my brush is going in a circle like this? Sometimes I'm not even touching the canvas. Just kind of trying to flick it up at the corner, the teeniest, tiniest little bit to create that roundness. Remember, we're only using one, well, two little colors, yellow and white against this background. So you got to keep those separations. You got to keep your angles. You got to keep a little bit of bright area, a little bit of dark area, different yellows, different whites, different bits of darkness all throughout the whole thing. Okay, and we're going to come back and get a fan brush. Let's get a different fan brush so we can keep that other one full of bright colors. I come back here with our yellow, our black and blue, and a little crimson, littlest bit. I right, don't need a whole lot on the brush. It's going to shine through all that bit of brightness, right? All we're trying to do is keep our little dark disconnect back in here. So if we come up underneath the wave and we start pushing up into it, right where that wave, the little thing starts to crash over, you need all these little bits, right? And do we decide? Mm, I think we are going to come out. I think we are going to come out because I like it when it starts to come out of the. Uh, the portal, right? Just like that, keep that little dark separation, a little bit higher with our shadows in there. And what does that look like to you guys? It looks like a stretched out S to me, if you ask me. All right, we're gonna come in here and just bash with our dark color over the, the color of the, the portal and everything. Just makes it look like it's just smashing out into the mist and fog of space, just way out here, right? 
what happened? Maybe it waterfalls down into the next one. You never know what's going to go. You never know what's going to happen around here, right? Now we're going to come back in. A little bit of our liquid white. Just need a little teeny liquid white in with our titanium white and our cad yellow mixture of our color here. And that'll help it come off of our brush so much easier. Okay, and we're going to come in. We're going to stick on top of these shadows, crest above the tip top of the wave. It helps push the horizon back a little bit. And then we ride these shadows on the top half all the way down. See, so there's still a bit of darkness underneath the shadow on top. And that way you retain that bit of back shadow behind the bit of the water, right? Come in here, just mush it up, mash it. Leave little bits, little things, little here, little there, because all you're gonna do is come back in and make a cloud just like that from way off in the distance. Start to mix it up, and all of a sudden those little light areas start interacting with the little dark areas. And everything starts just coming out of there like crazy. Man, I'm telling you, we could have it just fall down into the next one. We'll see how it we'll see how it lines up. We'll see how it lines up later. But I'm, I'm assuming we've got to have some sort of galactic clouds and stars and some sort of something out here. So just like that, why don't we come back in with our little brush that has our lighter color on it. We're going to wipe off that dark bit that got stuck to our brush. So now it's back to its original brightness, right? Come back in and need a little more liquid white. We're actually going to have to get more liquid white out and a little more of this color. And we're going to come back in one more time going over different areas. Right? All the same thing, just how we did it. Exactly the same as how we did it before. And now we're going to touch it with less what? Are we going to touch it with less practice? We're going to touch it with less paint? Or are we going to touch it with less of our P2, guys? And I, which I wonder just what Josh is talking about. Less pressure. Carrie Neal, that's right. Absol absolutely adorkable. You're getting, the, uh, you're getting the follow. You're the first one I saw. Troy Moretti, you're getting the follow as well for pressure. You guys know the amount of pressure, right? So first we had to make our pressure to make this cloud. Now we're gonna come in with about half that pressure, which was not a lot to begin with, right? And then we judge a little bit and you go, okay, it mixed it up a little, looks good. Maybe I wanna go over just a few areas, just softly enough that they don't even change. So it looks like you have that bit of water spraying out, right? Just the softest little thing. You decide, you decide what yours looks like, right? Come in there, little things, just mixing up as it hits. Maybe we have a little bit more detail in there. And then here comes the most fun part, but we gotta get some more liquid white out of the jar. So, <clears throat> you guys are gonna check in, you're gonna tell me where you're watching from, what's your favorite sandwich, and we're gonna come and just have a whole lot of fun on this one. Just a whole lot of fun from New Zealand. Let's see, we got my Etsy in my bio. That's right, you can go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com and purchase this painting. It is quite expensive because it's such a large piece. I don't know where in the world it would ship and it's got three full paintings in one painting on it. So it's a little expensive, and if it doesn't sell, it's perfectly fine. I'm gonna take it to the gallery when we go do the gallery show, and when we live broadcast from the gallery, that's gonna be cool. All right, let's add a little bit, just a little, we just need the smallest little bit of like some sand, just some wet, sandy, shiny little something underneath here. Otherwise, it just doesn't look right to my brain. I'm gonna come in with a little brush, not trying to touch the, edge of our portal, right? Just pulling it down and then pull it away from the wave first and then back to the wave. Keeping our little what, guys? Our little dark what? What do we call that thing again? I keep forgetting and you guys gotta tell me our dark. Cause it looks like a little piece of shadow underneath our foam, right? Let's see. If it doesn't sell it, if it doesn't sell, I'm eventually going to buy it. That's funny. Dark Separator, you guys know. Matthew Hendricks, Gerb49. I saw some other people out there. Uh, Jonathan Etheridge. Let's see. Dale's got a peanut butter and mayo and banana. I don't know how many, how many people you're going to get to agree with you on that one, Dale. Peanut butter and banana, I've heard. But I don't know about the mayo along with that. I'm, not, I'm a mayo fan. But I don't know about all those mixed together. That doesn't seem like it would be a good sandwich. Let's, let's ask a new, let's ask a new question per, per Dale's answer. What is the grossest sandwich you've ever tried? Or like the grossest food. Someone was like, here, try this. You're like, okay. I'll it. And it was just, uh, what's, the, what's the nastiest thing you ever ate, right? Was it dim sum from like a really crappy restaurant that just gave you terrible, terrible runs? Or was it, you know, was it some, some undercooked burger at some place? Did you not 
Did you go have raw sushi at some place? It was horrible. Like, what's the worst thing that you've ever eaten? You don't have to name names of the restaurants or anything, but just like, I don't know, sushi or, or whatever. What's the worst? And I love sushi. The worst thing I ever had actually was crab legs. We went to a place. It was like a, a buffet, an Asian buffet. And we went over there. And it, the, the crab legs smelled like they were s s like just soaking in a hot tub of sock water. It was so gross. It just smelled like a foot. It smelled like someone's laundry was in the tub as with the, with the crab keeping it warm. It was the grossest thing ever. So come on, guys. I want to hear some gross food you guys have eaten. What a tuna casserole, chicken feet. Oh, nasty. Oh, you got bean boozled, huh? Let's see, olives. I mean, that's not, you just didn't like them? Kimchi, I agree. Kimchi's so gross. Liver, it's nasty. Smells gross. Looks gross. Sounds gross. You ate a turtle? Amy, you ate a turtle? Oh my God. Let's see, shark. I wouldn't imagine shark would taste good. I've had, uh, I've had uh, swordfish and that was actually really, really, really good. Raw oysters can't be, you know, they can't feel good going down your mouth. Oh God. Oh, beaver. Someone had beaver? Beaver. I didn't know you could, I mean, of course you could eat a beaver. Like they, they, they hunt the beaver for the pelts. So obviously if they're, if they're going to take the pelt, they're going to take the meat, right? So you could eat the beaver meat, but I've never had it. I've had elk, like elk jerky before and like buffalo jerky, but uh, never beaver meat. Never. All right, guys, that's really cool. Okay, let's take a little bit of our uh, little teeny tiny fan brush, right? Because these little guys, they've got a good lick to them. You can even hear it. Like, like they're a little firm, a little bit of firmness to these guys. So we're going to take a small little bit of liquid white and, right, don't just fling it at the canvas, right? And a little bit of our titanium white you have to thicken it up just the littlest bit. And now that it's all wet and nasty, let me see how close we are here. That's all wet and nasty inside there. See that? Just ready to fling out like crazy. So I'm glad I came back here because we're zoomed in too far. Let's come back here and come over the side. There we go. And then I got to, you guys are going to be on like, a, like an elevator as we go down. Gosh, that's cool. All right, let me, hang on one more time. I'm zooming in a little bit. Just watch this right here as we spray in this bit of water, right? We're gonna take our, our brush like that, get our liquid white out here, and then we're gonna kind of basically <laughs> just let our brush go like it had a bunch of gears. And as it flings out, right, it's gonna fling little bits of paint at different areas and different thicknesses of different sizes and all sorts of stuff. So we're gonna come in here, we get all those cool little bits of spray as they start coming out, right? We had a couple in there. Oh, guys, it starts making it more and more and more 3D, but you don't want to put too many in there. Right now that we've got these little teeny tiny guys, we can go around the side. Making our little bit of our galaxy around everywhere, right? Just gorgeous. Paint a trillion, trillion stars, right? Just like that. We're out there floating in the galaxy and this just orb just opens up. Wicked, just wicked. I love, for whatever reason, this brush, the little number six in the Gak Doctor, it's like, it's just perfect for flinging stars. I don't know what it is about it. I was trying to do it with our bigger one the other day. I was like, oh, this should be the same, right? They just, it just doesn't flick the same as, uh, as the smaller one. So, just pretty gorgeous, you guys. Now, I probably should have done our next portal before spraying the stars down here at least, but gosh, that looks cool. Man, that looks cool. All right, let's come back here. You guys are going to go on an elevator ride down. So we're going to come down into the center of the canvas next and work down here. Perfect flickability. I like that. It's got good flickability. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, I had to get a little drink there. Because, man, all right, let's clean off these brushes. All we have is... Well, like three, four little brushes we got to clean. So it's going to be real fast. Tell me where you're watching from. What's the worst thing you've ever eaten? I want to stay on this. What's the worst thing you ever ate? Have you ever went over your friend's house to eat and the food just ain't no good? See, the macaroni soggy, the peas are most, and the chicken tastes like wood. Right? What's the worst place you ever went to? Wonder Mike. You're Wonder Mike right now. Tell me the worst thing you ever ate at a friend's house. 
goes by the name of a wonder mic. Come on, wonder mic, do what you like. Let's see. Two more brushes, guys, then we'll be there. Then we'll be there. I might have to redo my whole paper towel setup just after this uh, this yellow and green one. I won't have any more room to dab off any paper towel. Okay, here we go. Always gotta dab them off on a paper towel when they're done, otherwise they'll be too wet to work with, right? Dudes, this would be cool. What if we put the other one off to the side, we can have the clouds float down into it, right? But then it's off center and it's gonna look weird. Like my idea was for it to be just straight up centered on, just like that. Let's do it right there, right? What do you guys think? I mean, we could still incorporate the little cloudy spray, but I like how it's just sitting up there, just floating just excellently. No, not off center, Steph. Come on, Stephanie. You're not on my team, Steph. Like if I was gonna do it off center, then I would have done this one more off center so they would have been at a, at a better thing, right? It's just gonna look like we messed up if I just put it barely off center over here. All right, let's take a bit of white. Now we're into our green, right? So the green, if you have any yellow still mixed into your white, totally fine. No big deal, right? Let's come in here. Maybe we can see, because those are going to have to kind of overlap, right? And then we got our bit at the bottom. So let's do it like that. I think that looks about right, I would say. Okay, right in here, very lightly going around. It should change the blue down here. Oh, yeah, that's going to be cool. That's going to be cool. All right, little things. Remember, you don't really want to move it once it's up there. Don't move it too much. We're going to have to pull down in different directions, creating our little aura. Just like the minutes of a clock, though. You go too fast, you're going to mess them up. And sometimes i got to go once over it and then go back and go over it again. Okay, boom. All right, these guys are meant to touch, so it's okay. Otherwise, we wouldn't have enough room on this canvas. There we go. I don't want to pull them out too much the same, and I can't move, and my paint is way over there. Shoot. All right, hang on. i got to switch hands. Don't move. I'm going to load up the brush left-handed, which I've never done before. Did I move? We didn't move, did we? we never loaded the brush left-handed before. That's a very strange feeling. There we go. A little bit of brightness. I feel like we moved slightly. We might have moved a little. It's okay. All this is here is for like a little, um, like a backboard. I am playing basketball. Get that backboard that you can bounce your brush off of so you don't come inside of your little portal. Oh, just like that. That way. Be nice and bright. Push a little bit harder and not worry about going inside the opening. At least that's what I do. What you guys do is totally up to you. And then you just pull it out however you want to see it, right? Doesn't all have to be the same. And you work at it until you like how it looks. Then we'll take it and blend it all out with our, uh, our one inch brush. Looks like we're going to need more paint again. My goodness. This one's going to be so cool though. It's like blasting out of one side. Very neat. Very neat. Okay, let's come back up here, see if we can't finish around. Maybe we got enough paint left on the brush. Just enough. All right, so we turn the brush every so often. Shoot out a little bit longer bit. Pull down a little bit longer, a little bit shorter. A little bit longer. All depends on what you want it to look like, right? That's going to be so cool. Whoop! Our little guy fall out, but it's perfect. Yes! Look at that. Excellent. Excellent job. All right, now, again, we're going to come around the edge. Just pulling off little things. That's why I like to leave that guy in there. Makes it a little easier to come up to your edge and not worry about going on the inside. Right? That's the dangerous part. Man, that's cool. Look how it turns blue down here. And we got the blue ones at the bottom. Oh, it's going to be so cool. All right, let's get a little bit more paint on the brush. 
<clears throat> a little bit more paint on the brush. A little bit of white. Let's see. All right. So, come around, fix our little pieces. What are we going to do on the inside of this guy is the question. What to do, what to do. There's so many things. You could do a waterfall. You could do a little other beach scene. You could have it go in the other way. You could do a mountain. You could do trees. You could do a little, little river with a little tree in the waterfall out into the next one. That would be so cool. Let's work on that next time, right? <clears throat> so tons of little things you could do from this vantage point. Just be happy with how it looks before you move on. That's really all you got to do. All right, take our, our one inch brush, just go back, make it a little bit softer. Try not to touch any little bit of stars that you have out there because it'll make them drag. And they'll look like shooting stars. This canvas is so big, it's a little wiggly on the inside. There we go. See, with these guys, you can just stretch them out, really stretch it with that one inch, and it'll really soften the tips, right? Just as far as you can get it to go out with that aura, that glow. It's just really shining outside of our, our little moon clips. Just gorgeous. Just gorgeous, right? Fantastic. And remember, we're going to put something on the inside of it, so don't worry about it too much. That's the whole big thing we try to teach. Stop worrying so much, right? Nobody worries too much about what it's going to look like. Oh, I don't want to ruin it because this. Like, there's only one canvas in the world, and you only get one chance at painting, and if you're not good the first time, then that's it. Right? Is that is that how it works? Because I must be breaking the rules. This is my 733rd canvas, so that's a lot of canvases. No, 773rd. Excuse me. Did I label that right in the store? Let's see that. Yeah, 773. That's what we made here. What if we did these little clouds, guys, and they came down into this one? You know what we're going to do here? It's all about deciding what, you know, what do you want to see around your, your bit of eclipse? That's the whole thing, right? What do you want to see inside of it? Yeah, that's my thought, John. That's totally my thought was bringing it down like that and uh, having a little bit of cloudage in the next one. I like that yellow up there. I didn't think I was going to like how yellow it was going to be. I really like that. Ooh, an underwater scene. We got a mountain, we got a waterfall spilling into the next one. Jess. Jess knows what we're talking about around here. Jess. An underwater scene would be cool, but it's not something that I've really practiced. And even though I do make up a lot of stuff up here live, um, <clears throat> I had thought about doing an underwater scene, right? But on a circle, I don't know what it would look like, right? We'd have to have... Dude. Maybe we could do it in the blue. The blue would work better, actually because we'd have to have the bit of light at the top shooting down into the water, right? And blend it out, but have our bit of horizon way up here, maybe with a little teeny tiny moon, right? It seems like it's doable until I start doing it. And then I think in my head, it has to be perfect. And that's when it starts getting messed up. <clears throat> All right, let's do what, uh, let's try this thing. We had just a couple little bit, little tiny bit of paint, little teeny bit of pressure. I'm gonna drag this little bit. It's gonna turn into this galactic cloud. It's going to flow down, but it's going to go behind the aura and inside, right? So we're going to be very light on the pressure over here. And if we have to go back and make these guys a little bit brighter to push this thing out, so be it, right? So be it. And then when we're done in a certain area, you got to make sure you streak them back straight. Otherwise, they will not look straight. They'll look all angled and all weird. There we go. That's coming down. It'd be cool if we could have it come around the whole backside. I mean, there, dude, should have thought about that before. There we go. We'll go back in and spray a little bit. I want to bring some more of this darkness, so more pressure, pulling it down, dragging it, right? And then we can go back in, add a few little bits of highlight to it. And actually really have it come down and just get into that bit of Aurora, just sneak itself back in there, right? A little bit of pressure. So I'll let that brightness flowing down, and then what if we picked it up? What if we were like, hey there, pal, 
why don't you come in here? Just continue on across our bit of our scene, right? And we have the next bit of clouds come out and down around the other one. My goodness. <laughs> what is it going to look like? We're going to come up here. Not going to connect them, right? It's, it's, a, it's, it's, what's the word? It's implied that it's the same cloud, right? I don't need to connect it all the way. I don't want it to come through the top of the, the hole. It has to come through the back. If we come out of the front of this one, we've got to go through the back of that one so we can come out the front of it again, right? We can't go out the back of it and then into the next one, you know, down at the bottom. So make sure we get that little dark separator in there. That's all we need. Look at how that cloud just comes to life with a little bit of paint, a little bit of pressure. A little bit of practice, right? Now that we had that idea, what are we going to do underneath it? That's the question. How's that look, guys? What do you think? Oof. Man, I like that. That's very cool. That's very cool. That is very cool. So wicked. I agree. I agree. So the uh, def thank you guys for the roses and stuff. I love you, Art Seeker. You're awesome. Do a dolphin. I don't think I can. I think I want to go all seascapes with this one. I really do, but I don't know. Oh, it's going to start to look so cool. It's going to start to look so cool. Thank you, Bird Woman. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys, all your taps and tapping on the screen and doing all the cool stuff you guys do to help get the live out to everybody else on TikTok. For some reason, I can't reach them all myself, so I need your guys' help. Yeah, just how it pushes it back, right? Now, let's come back in. Where's our little... Our little star, or our flickability, our brush with a good flickability. We'll come in here, just flick a few more. We need a few, a little bit more paint. A little bit more flicking paint over here. We're gonna come in and just pop in a few little bits and sort of connect, right? You have all those little bits of stars, little bits of spray. They're a little thicker in some spots, a little thinner in some spots. Very cool. And the best part about it is inevitably you get some onto your beach which looks like little sparkling bits in your sand or your water. Sometimes you catch a little teeny tiny dot right in that dark area, right where it's supposed to be. Just so cool. All right, let's do, we haven't done a mountain inside of a portal. So why don't we do a mountain? Let's put, no, 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 no. I got an idea. Let's do this. Let's come in with a little bit more cloudage, right? A little bit more cloudage. If we're gonna have it come down into the next one, then we have to fill up this little bit of space with a little color, right? So all we're doing, just based on our pressure, keeping it light at the top, working it down, right? Very light pressure so it doesn't go away. And then as soon as we get to this point, hard pressure so we bring it down as far as we want it to go. And it's all about judging and stopping and moving forward here, there, everywhere. Leave our little bit of dark separator just like that. If you can get it really close, I figured out in that blue one, if you can get it just so close, then it'll look like this is actually a globe with this imprinted on the outside, almost like an ornament. It did it with that blue one that I just painted. And uh, we got real super close with the dark separator. And it looked, it made it, instead of look like we're looking in, it made it look like it was round and it was popping outward. Super neat, super neat. All right, let's come back in. Where's my teeny, there it is. I always lose this little guy. It's like the teeniest, tiniest little filbert brush. And I was like, I, like, I like, just love having little moons in here. So let's pop our little moon. Doesn't have to be lined up directly underneath the other moon. Just gonna push it in, same exact way. You're gonna rotate around. Bing, bang, boom, spinning it, turning it. This cool little thing, bam, just like that. Just like that. We could literally do a whole portal of green clouds. Just a portal of green clouds. Look at that, you guys. Amazing, you guys are awesome. Thank you for the little gifts and all the stuff. I appreciate it. Just very cool. Now, what do we do underneath? Oh, I remember what we were doing. I remember what we were doing. All right, we had that idea. I think it was Jess. I think Jess in the, in the comments, she had had the idea of doing a, um, uh, like a waterfall pouring out into the next one, right? Which I had thought about. I thought about Jess. Don't try to steal my ideas, okay? But I thought about that, and uh, I think it's going to be really neat if we can do it right. Maybe have it fall, like, straight through. If the bottom one's like a cliff. <gasps> Or like a like a like a cave, you know what I mean? If the bottom one is a cave and it's all blue and like spooky, oh guys! So we could literally have the like the waterfall 
Maybe it rained, it turned into a river, and then it fell down into a deep, dark cave. What do you guys think about that? Maybe there's a waterfall in, like, and the water just falls through the cave. Oh, oh, Jess V. Oh, Jess V. She's like, I wish I could be so talented. Me too, Jess, me too. All right, now let's take our little bit of white. I'm literally the luckiest person ever. I, I've never taken a class. I've never practiced. I mean, I practice every night in front of you guys um, and teach you as we go, but I never watched anyone else's videos. I've never taken a single course. I'm not a Bob Ross certified instructor, right? Better. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, the uh, <laughs> we're going to come in here and we're just going to start making our little bit of river. I like to show you guys, you don't need to go to school. You don't need to do all these little things in order to do cool stuff, right? You need a little bit of knowledge, which I'm doing for you. I've taken the time, I've done it all. I've tried this, I've tried that. Making it very soft back here, very far away. All right, when we come in, say we came to this point, we start to turn. And our little river came over this way. We turned again. Very flat turns though, right? It's not a, it's not a steep, sharp thing like that. And maybe right here, we had our little bit of waterfall come down, just like so, right? And it fell down like that. Maybe it hit another little bit of water underneath there. Maybe, who knows? Who knows? Looks like a pathway. Oh, that's cool. It looks like a floating, before I added the waterfall, it looked like a floating walkway. That's neat. Bram's here. Uh-oh. What you thinking, Bram? There's no way Bram will top this one, Bram. I got you. Got you, right? Nobody can beat this one. No, it's not a competition. It's not a competition. I'm just messing around. I'm just messing. I love giving Bram a hard time. Bram's like fresh back off of vacation. I got to give him a hard time. Let's see. I go over and to the side, over and down, over and down, over and down. Letting the water fall off that way. And then we're going to come back. Little teeny things. It's because I said I was better than the CRIs. That's why Bram showed up. <laughs> uh, that's funny. There we go. Perfect. All right, this guy's going to slide off. It can go as far as it wants on either direction. We're going to have a bit of grass back there. And it's all about our angles of the water. This, that, and the other. You get all these little dips, and we haven't even done anything yet, right? Take our pit down here. Let's leave a little room for some, fo uh, some foam. And watch, just like this. We're going to come out with our water. It's going to slide out and drop off. Okay. My goodness. You guys are like, oh no, what has he done? Check this out over here. Let's see if I can save these guys a little bit longer. I didn't really want the water to come out that far, but because it's oils and we can sort of adjust and shape them, right? It goes out a little bit further in that one section. Who knows? Maybe we'll put a little galactic cloud over here, whatever we do. Right? That wicked little bit shooting off down there, and that keeps our little bit of river right back in here where we want it to be. Yeah, we're going to have a whole bit of cloud. Yeah, we're going to have mist. All oh, the we have so many things coming off of this thing. All right, back in here, very lightly, back and forth, just softening the river. Very soft. Not trying to take away all the little details, right? Then we come to our waterfall. Pulling it over the edge. Just like that, nice and rounded. Got to have that rounded feel. All right, and then we'll come back in with just a teeny little, teeny little bit of white and a little bit of green on our brush. All right, we'll come in here. It needs to be a little bit whiter, maybe a little bit more yellowy too. Let's get that yellow. That yellow on that brush, right? Brush is all like popped out. Hang on, squeezing down here. Oh yeah, there it is. Look at that. Come in, start filling in those little dark areas with our bit of grass. And all we're doing is just tapping at it, right? Just touching at the thing, whatever comes off, comes off. You get all these little dark areas. It's exactly what you want. You don't want to have it super bright. And what are we going to do? We're going to stay inside the portal back there. Don't come out until we're in the front. Now, same brush, a little bit of green, a little bit of yellow, teeny little bit of white, just to brighten up a bit, all right? Squeeze the brush back down. We're going to come back here. Let's say we came to the edge, you just turn and let it come down. You know what I mean? Come over here, turn and fall, turn and fall. Little things are gonna fall down the side. It's literally it, right? Then we're gonna come back here, decide how far do we want our grass way off there to come in. How far on our little bit of river? Way off in the distance, right? And then you start building little things. You come in, little taps, little touches, 
little here, little there, a little bit more paint. Every so often, you know, run out of paint, come back like that, start falling over the side. You kind of got to guide it. You know what I mean? You're guiding it. Totally up to you. Now back in there where we had to kind of cover over our river because our plants, our bushes, our, uh, sorry, our brush was a little bit too big. There we go. Just take them, go back over it. You got your cool little piece of river back in there. Okay, a little bit of white. We can brighten up little areas on it. Little thing, little rapids. Okay. Little bits of white, not a lot. Don't have to have a lot. You don't want you, you want to have a very small amount. Otherwise, it loses its whole thing. All right now, let's say our other our other eclipse portal. Where? What's your guys' view anyway? Oh gosh, that's so cool. Gosh, that's so cool. This one has not sold yet. I don't think. As far as my store says, it is not sold. Let's see. Mm -mm, hang on. I hate having to do this. Hang on. Yeah, right there. Okay, so it's still in the store. It's a little expensive, but with three full paintings on it, guys. So let's come down again. All right, we're going to come down here. It's a 24 by 36. So it's two feet wide by three feet tall. You've got a 12 and a half inch circle, an eight inch circle, and another eight inch circle down underneath. So three full scenes with, you know, space behind. And uh, it's basically like three full paintings. So considering we sell them between two to three hundred dollars a piece, then you'll understand what two to three, uh, two to three full paintings is going to be. Okay, let's come down in here. Take our last guy. Save the paint with Josh Pan just for him. Oh, that's going to be so perfect, you guys. Okay, right there. Sort of where we want to be. Sometimes, there we go. Sometimes I can make a little mark and that just kind of lines me back up for when I want to go back up. I go, okay, I see where I wanted to put it right there. You know what I mean? Just by spinning it. Didn't have any paint on it. Otherwise it would deposit paint right there. Now, spend the whole rest of the night on our knees down here, right? Hey, how's it going everybody? Nice and nice and low tonight. Let's get low like very white tonight. We'll get down real low. <clears throat> Just paint this portal scene. It's gonna blow your mind. All right, all right. Let's do this right here. I think that is just about perfection, right there. Okay, so we're gonna go very lightly around the side. This one should be much bluer, because all we have is blue down here. Oof, ah, that is a nice blue. It's one of my favorite Yiddish words. Oof, ah. oof. Ah. Man, look at that. That is like a, it's like tealish, greenish, gorgeousish. Fantastic. Remember, don't move that little guy. Let's take it. Let's pull him out. This guy's not as bright as his bigger cousin, right? Little teeny thing, especially down here at the bottom. You're going to run into your easel. So make sure they're not all the same length down there. And that's why we like adding our little stripes out like that. Then crisscross over. It's not going to hurt it, right? We're not going to do too many at the top because I know my waterfall is going to come down around here, but you don't know where we're going to stop. So let's just do a few more just like that. And then we know our water is going to come down into the scene. We're going to fall into our little cave scene. Remember, that's what we're doing over here. A little cave per the fans. The fans want a cave. So the fans get a cave. That's what happens around the paint with Josh show. Fans get what they want, right? Let's come back. Let's load up some more paint. Got to get some more paint over here. Little things. And then longer things. And then heavier things and lighter things. And maybe we come over here. I know you guys might not be able to see this part. It's the same thing that happens everywhere else along the canvas. It's just in the shadow of the pan shadowy area of the pan. So let's come in here. Just like that, we're going to be painting an, we're going to be painting a, an eclipse with Deadpool right here on the Paint with Josh show. There we go, guys. Very cool. Let's take this one away. Hello. <laughs> Look at that. Have our little bit come right down perfectly into it. Drop that. Probably woke Bailey up. Sorry, Bailey, if you woke up. 
up a little bit. So I don't want to make this guy as bright. And remember, we're leaving that top section so we can come down inside. Right down inside is the best place. Dang. Little things. I don't make them too bright. I don't make them too bold. A lot of times I end up adding too much white. And then I go to take a photo of it. And I'm like, man, that's it's like super bright. You know what I mean? It's not as blue as I thought. It's, it's almost too white. It's because I added too much white. It's kind of smothered all the blue. So depends on what you want it to look like. Right? Little things, little swipes, sometimes longer. Now, what if we can do this, guys, just real quick. I'm going to try not to drop this whole canvas out. But we got to do this. A little bit of surgery here. Hang on. Oh, come down a little. There we go. Right out on the edge. This is dangerous right here. It's the danger zone. Ah, there we go. Okay, still tight enough to work on. That'll allow us to pull off little things, you know what I mean? Like little details coming down at a, without coming down and hitting the easel. Oh, I hurt my thumb doing that. I don't know if we're gonna be able to paint any more on Fridays and, and Thursdays. I just hurt my thumb doing that, guys. Very cool. Man, I love it when they come out how they're supposed to come out. Isn't that the best? That's the real joy, I think, is when you do a painting and it comes out exactly how you wanted it to on the very first try. Didn't have to fight it. Everything came out very simply and easily, right? Didn't have to do much. That's the joy, I think. Bing, bang, boom, bang, bing, bang, boom. Just making it softer, spreading it out, letting its aura kind of reach out a little bit further out into the... Uh, uh, not atmosphere, out into the galaxy. There we go. Super, super cool. I've already seen a few people's versions of these paintings. They're very, very neat. So keep sending them in, guys. I love it. All right, now let's get a bit of our, let's come back up to this scene and continue. So let's wash the blue off of our big old fan brush because we don't want to have blue up there tainting our colors. All right, and now we're going to take just a touch. Well, a touch, I see. We're going to take a lot. I'm going to grab a lot of this white up right here. Come down here. We're going to get on one knee in front of this painting and say, do you, painting, accept this paint to be your lawfully forever bonded partner onto yourself? Yes? Okay, let's do this. You guys, she said yes. The canvas said yes. Oh, my God. Thank you. Oh, my God. No? Okay, here we go. So we're gonna come in here and make our little river, right? We're dropping our color on, going to the edge, but not touching it, not touching it, not touching it. Now we're out here. This is where our falls come in, right? A little bit of water, just a little bit, all rushing towards us. A couple little taps in here with our bit of our brush. We're gonna make a little bit of fog out of that, right? That's all it does. Little teeny little bit of cloud, same as we're doing up there, right? All you got to do is leave a few little bits of water, a few little bits of mysteriousness, little mysteriousness. Make these guys a little brighter too. We'll throw a little, just a teeny little guy down there. A little bit of water falling right off. Slide it back. Very cool. Gosh, guys. That one is neat. Just neat. There we go. I need a little thicker paint in this section right here. It was too thin. It blended away on me. I had too much pressure, right? There we go. Little softly. You gotta keep it a little different than the rest. And then we wanna come in. Oh yeah, look at that green on there. That green, let it fade towards us. It's become lighter and lighter and lighter. With any little bits of white, just straight sideways if you can. Now, here comes the fun part. Let's load this thing up. And we're going to waterfall it right off the edge. We have to decide. If a waterfall is going to come through there, what are we going to have on the side? We're going to have some sort of, like, backdrop color. Some sort of something. A little mist. You guys even see that? It's almost not bright enough. Let's get a little bit of white. Just the teeniest, tiniest bit of white. 
more blue than anything else, just to test it, right? Come back in here. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a bit of like soft blue mist right there. Oh guys. All right, so say we're gonna have this mist around the edge of our of our waterfall as it's coming through. You gotta have some sort of something. You gotta have some sort of color. And if it's gonna fall through, let's say just like this little piece of the aura right here. That say that was the waterfall. We're gonna have a little bit of mist on either side, that darkness in the center, so it can come down. Maybe it hits into a pool right here and feeds out towards us and falls again, or you know, feeds out, and falls in inside the you know, remains inside the thing. Who knows what's gonna go on? We're about to find out right now. So I don't want to have too much paint. I want to have a little bit of that dark color, a little bit of our lighter br uh, blue color, and then just the teeniest bit, like just a touch, one little teeny tiny touch of that white, and brighten stuff up in there so brightly, just the smallest little bit too much is going to be too much. So remember, be careful with the colors. Just like that, ah, it's like a little dark heart pumping inside this cave. <laughs> just like that. Okay, let's take our bit of water right here. Let's say we came out here and then we're just gonna all right into this guy. Oh, that's gonna be so cool. Right down inside, just like that, guys. I don't wanna make it too thick. All right, we gotta try to retain some of our bit back into our, um, our little uh, our bit of our waterfall and our river and stuff, right? This guy was coming out a little bit higher up here. If he doesn't fall so far, oof, that's gonna be cool. Yeah, see how we came out of this one? Then we went back through this one so we could come out of it and into this one. Perfect. Perfection. Gonna have our little top up there. We're gonna fall in. <laughs> just maybe just fall into nothing. So cool. All right, get a little bit more of our paint because I need to have a few little brighter areas up here. See, we came off just like that. A couple little bright bits. If it starts to blend away, go back, get more paint. Right? Go back, swipe it in again. Go back, get another bright area, another bright area. And the more and more we pull it down, the more and more it's going to interact with the paint that's underneath, right? Now, let's get our one inch, or our two inch brush. A little fan brush with this guy right here and just slide these little white areas back. I'm gonna slide them back, gonna slide them back, just like this. I'm leaving those little bits of light. So it looks like the water's come up and just spilled right out. Just fantastic. Now I'm gonna take our two inch brush, do the same thing over and down, over and down, over and down. Just to soften it down, you can sort of see through the water. It's a little transparent. You can still see that maybe it's gonna fall straight down into that little portal. And depending if we pulled it and just left it dark like that, you need to pull it and it would look like it was going down and then through and out the other side. So cool. So stinking neat, you guys. All right, we're gonna take a little of the black and the crimson, just a little bit of it. Doesn't need something really crazy, right? Come right down here and pop in. There's a little tree that live way out there. Cool little thing that lives right in there, right? Neat old little guy. We decide what he looks like. Don't need to put in all of his branches because we're not going to see all of them, right? Never see all the branches. Now, here's the fun part. Come in with our black and blue color. A little bit of our sap green color as well, just to have because we're in our green section. And look at this guy just take shape as soon as you start putting those little bits on there, right? He's coming off. He's starting to hang over. He's starting to cover little pieces of our, of our forest in the background. Starting to come over here. Little bits, super textured, super thick bits, right? Really brings the tree forward when you have those very thick textured bits. And it just looks like it's pop right out here. You see how close you get to the edge? It almost makes it look like this ball is round. You know what I mean? Versus looking through something, it makes it look like we're kind of looking at it. And it's a little ball out there. Very cool. Okay. A little green brush, we need our white with our green. Come back in here, a little bit of grass. Things, now we need a little bit of bush in here too, just to help push it back. So let's get a little bit of our dark color. Look how much that canvas shakes. There we go, put our hand behind it. A little bit of our dark color, maybe we'll pop it kind of out 
into, you know, hanging over our water, just like that. Just kind of hanging out over the side. Very cool. Got a little of our yellow, a little of our green. Mix those guys up together. Just see if we can't get a few. Oh yeah. Just a few little bits of brightness hanging off of this guy. The yellow and the green, not just straight up yellow. Not just straight up yellow. He's like a little lime tree out there. Who knows what it is? It's a little lemon tree hanging out out there in the, in the dark. But you gotta leave all those deep dark areas inside. Look at that. Very cool. Very cool little thing. And each scene only has the color, its base color in. You know what I mean? I'm not using brown or red or whatever. It's, it's green and, and black and blue, yellow and black and blue and crimson. You know what I mean? The blue will just be blue, black, and white. So three extremely limited palette scenes. Oh, why did I do that? I should have put some yellow dots on this guy. There we go. I really scoop it up so it's like hanging off. There we get those little bits that like stick off. Little bits of flowers or some sort of texture something. Oh yeah. Oh guys. Man, oh man. That is stinking neat. Very cool. Jeez Louise. Okay. Let's do one more little guy. Let's do a little bush over here on the side. I think it's because I love it. It's because I love it so much. A little of our green, a little of our black, a little of our blue. Gotta really hold back here behind the canvas so it doesn't bounce too hard and push our river back just a little bit. So you can put all that, that bit of darkness and it just brings everything forward and pushes everything back. That's the fun part, man. All right, well, we've been going for an hour and five minutes and we did two and a half scenes. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's a good, that's a good pace for what I want to do at the live show at the gallery is uh, about 90 minutes. So if I can stay on this pace and do a three portal scene there, that would be kind of cool. Okay guys, let's put a little bit of our highlight color on this guy and then we'll be down to our little wintry scene at the bottom. Little taps leaving in a lot of darkness, a lot of deep dark area. You know what looks so cool on the blue one and I just can't not do it right here. Like I just have to do it. I just have to do it. Very small little pressure. And the more and more and more we go, the more we push. Right there. Cool little tree that just lives right out in between everything, very neat, just like that. All right, now I'm gonna take a little bit, a teeny tiny little brush, and a fair amount of my odorless mineral spirits, which we're now calling OMS, right? So if you ever hear me say OMS, odorless mineral spirits, it's like 15 syllables, it's way too long, way too long of a word for a tutorial. So we just call it OMS now. OMS, so we're gonna dip into our OMS and we're gonna come into our thick paint, our dark mixture, our black, purple, uh, crimson and, uh, and blue. And then we're gonna come in here and just decide wherever we wanna have a little branch, just toss one out, make it look like a little lightning bolt. You know what I mean? Totally up to us, what we do with it, where they go, what they look like, right? How thick it is, little things pop out. That's why you gotta have that bit of darkness in, uh, sorry, that bit of light back there behind our dark, behind our darkness of our tree because it's gotta stand out against something. And our little, that's a little crazy looking branch. Branch, my man. Just like that. A couple little guys hanging off of it. You got a very cool looking little tree. Right? Very neat little thing. So it's like a hand. Then you decide how many you put on there when you're finished. Just make sure that your branch, if it's thick enough to hold all that stuff out there, that you got a big thick trunk holding it all up in the front up here where it actually connects to the tree. Otherwise, it's just going to look funny. If it's not thick enough, it's just going to look funny. 
even that, it's gotta be thicker. My, in my head, now I can go even further with that branch. We could do two little trees up. You know what I mean? But it can't just be this thin little piece that's connecting it to the trunk. That ain't gonna work. Show you guys. Coming out to the side. That's a cool tree, dude. Ooh, right around the moon. I was going up for it and I was like, nope, I'm going right around you. Just go right around him. Come off this, just like that. All these wicked little things just adds depth for days. Just depth for days out here. Out into the thing. Oh man. Just how tall and sharp can we get our little stick to get up there? The little guy out that way. You start looking really cool, and then you're like, oh, I could do like a thousand, and then you do it, and then you're mad that you did a thousand, so don't do too many. But just like that, it looks very cool. Actually, this guy needs to be longer. If all of his other brothers and sister branches are a little longer, why is he so short on the end? I mean, they don't all have to match, right? But still, very cool. Oh, I like it. Like it. And it's all about it's all about whether who likes it, and about your husband likes it or whether you like it, right? Or whether your wife likes it or whether you like it. It's whether you like it, right? It's not about whether I like it or Johnny or or anybody, right? It doesn't matter what what Bram thinks about it. If you like it, that's where you got to go. That's what you got to stick with. Now let's take. Teeniest little bit. Maybe we can get a bit of that yellow and green mixture, same as our grass, to maybe shine just a touch onto our tree trunk, right? It's going to look like Predator. You know, predator, is, uh, when he bleeds, it's got that green trunk to it. Woo! -hoo! That's going to look cool. Remember, you got to keep a bit of darkness in between the, the green trunk and the, you know, the green color of our sky. And we don't need to go all the way up here. That the black off of that yellow is just fine enough. That's fine and dandy. Little piece out there. Little piece up in here. Very cool. Very cool. I like it. Remember, it doesn't all have to be highlight. It's totally fine. Let's get down here into our little winter scene. Now, for a winter scene, dude, we could turn these, I could totally turn this into clouds. I could totally turn that into clouds down there. Oh, guys, we could do the clouds, right? And then we could put a wintry little mountain in front of it. That'll be cool. And then it'll show all different types of uh, of stuff. That'll be neat. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. The decision has been made. First, we're going to uh, we're gonna decide we want our bit of waterfall to come out like this. We're going to fall down. And then down in here, eventually, at some point, we're going to end up making clouds out of it. So... We'll have to make some white. There we are. Make some sort of something and turn that into a bit of a bit of cloud. Right? Just like this. I bet you we can make it look like a cloud for going like this. Keeping a little bit of darkness underneath. Right? A little bit. That blue back in between. Right? And come over here. Same blue brush. Less pressure. A little bit of white. Not trying to let the two white colors touch. Down here to the side of the portal. Oh, wow. Holy cow. Holy cow in a handbag. Look at this. Come over here. Popping it up. Saving that little bit of darkness right in there. I like that. Come over here. I mean, you could just have whatever you wanted back in here. It looks like it's literally like it came down. It had an instant like frozen reaction. And you know how when you take uh, boiling water outside and you throw it up and it turns into snow? That's what happened right here. Got so instantly just hot or cold or whatever. It just froze into a cloud just like that. Oh, so neat. Now, what do we do? All right, now we've got our little bit. We're back in here. That just looks so freaking cool. What if we had a 
Ooh, if we put like our mountain in there, we could do mountain, we could do trees, we could do... What could we do back in here, Josh? Let's, we're going to throw a little piece of lightning. We need a small little liner brush, a little bit of our liquid white, and we'll probably need my mall stick because I never go anywhere without it. Right, come up here. Now, if I'm going to put lightning, we're going to have a mountain. Let's shoot it out this way. Let's pick a bright area in our clouds, maybe right there. That's where the, the lightning is going to come from, right? And then we're just going to be very light, very wiggly, using just the tip of the brush. Sometimes we have to spin the brush as we're going. Just the teeniest, smallest little line you could possibly get to connect, right? And now up at the top, you can either take a filbert brush or your one inch brush or whatever brush that you like to blend with. Right? I'm going to use, I guess we'll use this blue colored brush. I'm going to just try to get underneath it and just mess it up just a little bit, right? That way it looks, hang on, a little swipe, a little something, a little, ah, there we go. It just looks kind of like it erupted out of the cloud. That's what I want it to look like. So soft. And it's got this little bright area right as it starts coming out there. Lights up, comes down. You can do as many little arms as you want. I tend to find that I want to make it look like you know, this, and then it doesn't look like a lightning bolt anymore. It looks like a tree branch. So I only tend to do one anymore nowadays. And um, now we can still get away with a very cool seascape, just like that one up down here in the blue. They look so neat. All right, we got the lightning. We were going to talk about a mountain. So let's talk about a mountain then. Let's add a little more black, a little more blue. It's all the same, just with the base colors changing, is it? That's right, so if we did, maybe we had a little scraggly old. Now I'm going to put it in just like we do with our, with our uh, uh, clouds, right? It leaves these very jaggedy edges along the top. And then we'll slide it back down wherever you think you're going to have a little bit of curve or rotation. It can't all just fall the same way, right? Come way down underneath our lightning bolt down there. Oh, that looks really cool. And then we could have a little pathway coming this way, you guys. Oh, my God. Oh, that's going to be neat. Okay, well, let's plan for a path. That guy down there, keeping it very dark over here. I don't even want to light this up at all. So dark. So dark. No doubt. No amount of brightness at all to it. There we go. All depends on how we're sliding our little mountains down, where they come down, where they line up. Oh, it's going to be like a little desert path, guys. Oh, it's so cool. But covered in snow. So cool. Look at that little dip right in there. That's like that. That's the money shot. That's what you want to have right there. All that darkness around the edges. Get our extreme dark disconnect around the side. Comes down into extreme black down here. You can't even tell what's down there. That's going to be fun. I keep leaning into my paint pile over here on my arm. Okay, now we're going to come back. We're going to get a little of the white onto our brush. A little of our blue onto the brush as well. And let's go up and we'll just see, maybe we can highlight this guy. Yeah, just like that. A little bit of our light color. Even little dark areas, little disconnections. Right? Pulling it down. Go down however far you want. You could even have like a little, you could have a river back here instead of a walkway. It could be a river coming down, or it could be a walkway. It could be anything. It could be a, a little snowy path. Right. Up the side of the hill over here, it's starting to come down. Just like that, as we're rolling out, just don't come out side to side. Ooh, guys! Gosh, we can just leave it so, such a small little dark disconnect right there. That is the business. Very dark, very dark. And we can always go back and highlight it, so don't worry there. Right, following along, wrap it up into the next thing. It's like we're painting waves and stuff, right? Got a cool little walkway. All these little things, guys. So neat. All right, let's take our bit of brush up here. Add little bits of brightness, little bits of darkness, right? Don't have to have the whole thing be covered in the bright. Right? Maybe it falls back in there. It starts to light up. It's so softly, the little bits, little things that are that are lighting up there. Okay, we don't have any more light color on the brush, so let's go back over here. And just like that. Lighten it up. 
slowing down, connecting with our other pieces, right? Not being all the same, having those little bits of darkness back in there, a little bit of dark flying off the backside over here, just like that. Oh yeah. Don't want them to all be the same though, right? All the same, then we have no depth, we have no details, we have no distance in it, there's no ridges, there's no anything, it's all the same. All right, so slide it down, all depends on what we have it look like. And the more white that we use, right, the more it's going to look like snow. So we can just keep adding and adding and adding and adding and adding and adding and adding, however far you want to go. Or this could be a blue desert nighttime scene, right? Put a little cactus in there if you wanted to. All up to you. See these little angles that we're doing? Coming down, sliding back. Bing, bang, boom. Gotta have those little rounded shapes. Otherwise, it's not gonna make sense to our brain. And what I tell you, if you just go out to the very, very edge, it looks like it's a ball versus a, uh, a thing. Dang it, that's cool. So, if it hasn't sold by now, guys, I don't think it's going to sell, but that's totally fine because I'm going to keep it for the gallery show that we're going to go do on June 17th. So there we go. A little bit of bright areas. Swiping it up just makes it look more round. Have it be messy like that, right? Nature is not a perfect thing. You don't want to have perfect little lines. It doesn't have to be the most perfect bit. Ugh. Unless we're talking about our dark separated, and that has to be perfect, right? I'm just messing with you guys. Very cool. Very neat. All right, let's take our little bit. See if we can soften those down just a touch. Oh yeah, look at the change in here from those little brush strokes. What it looks like when it's just softly brushed out and everything's it's smooth as silk. Ah, oh, so nice. So nice. Guys, what do you think? What do you think of this one? Got a little bit more brightness. Maybe this guy got hit by a bit of, uh, look at that light from the lightning. He really brightened up different places, right? Even though he's much further away. There we go. Very cool. Man, I like that. You see what happens when you bring this bit of light color and it gets brighter and then it flows down into the color that's down here. It just helps your eye. You know what I mean? It adds that distance. We're coming from a place where it should never be all the way down into the foreground. That helps everything kind of go round on me, on me anyway. So my goodness guys. Okay. I wonder if we're going to have to sign this thing three times or not, right? Just put one big signature down at the bottom. Okay. Where's my little, there we go. A brush flicking star. Or my star flicking brush. It's got good star flicking, flicky, flicking, it's a flickinometer. Flicking potentialities here. A little bit of white, a little bit of our titanium white. And now maybe we'll get back far enough where everybody can see. There we go. Right? That's what it looks like. That's really cool, guys. Now I'm going to take this bit. We're going to come in and just finish off our little spray pattern. Right? Look at how quickly they fill up. Don't want to do too many. Make sure you got blankets and stuff underneath you if you're going to do it in your house like I do. Just like that. A couple little bits. Nothing too crazy. Woo! Holy cow. Right now, if you want the teeniest, tiniest little bit of stars out there in your, in your nighttime sky, just as easily spray them in. They're easily sprayed in over there. We never got in up at the top, though. Never got them in up there. There we go. A few little things. So cool, guys. And it's one of the only paintings where you can finish your entire painting and then literally throw paint at the whole thing. And it looks awesome. Just don't do too many little stars. You want to keep them very small, very small amount of paint. Golly, just gall e Glee, <laughs> just glee. My goodness, look at, I got to stand back here and look at it with you guys. Oh, that's wicked. That is wicked. What would you name this painting? Thank you, Cosmic Lighthouse. Triple Dream. Little Horse Rider. That's the title. Holy S, it's amazing. <laughs> Portal Seasons, the waters between space and time. If you would have said betwixt space and time, I would have loved you forever. Betwixt. Triple Illusions. Uh, hypnotic Beauty. Portals to the Soul. Oh my. 
dimensional shift, trinity, string theory. I like that one too. Mystical time travel, fantasy falls. That's pretty wicked. No moon on the bottom. Oh, you're right. Well, that's because there's a giant waterfall in the sky. I can add a moon. You know, I'm going to add a moon now just because you said that. Now it's getting a moon. It wasn't even going to have a moon, but now it's going to have a little baby moon. Way out there. Little tiny little moon. Give me a circle. There we go. There we go. Beauty. We go from big to smaller, the smallest on the moons. I like that though. The moon actually, those moons line up like Orion's belt, guys. Like, turn your head on the side and look at those moons. They make that little curve like Orion's belt. I wonder if we did that on purpose. All right, Cosmic Lighthouse, hit me with some of the best names. Can you pin some of the best names that you've seen? Because I can't be back here for all of them. Maybe that's the title. What? What was Orion's belt? I know that. I thought of that, too. If it was a, a sideways photo, like a, a, what does it say? Falling into space, I like that one. Trust, love, and respect, I like that one too. Let's see, triple threat, I like triple threat because that's what I was gonna name it to begin with. Anything with three, I did a, a triple wave, I called it triple threat. Portal season, seasons fade, Orion's dream. I like Orion's dream, who said that? Orion's Dream, Aquaman 2K19. I'm going to give you a follow anyway, just in case we name it Orion's Dream. Let's see, Timo. Bop, bop, bop. Circle of Beauty, Divine Trinity. I like all those. Three Stooges. Orion's Fantasy, Triportal Abyss. Ooh, Orion's Dream is a perfect name. I dig it, guys. Hypnotic Beauties. Wait, see the name, Hypnotic Beauty's name for it. Well, what did she say? It's hard to even find that because it's hard to read her screen name. I, I remember. Let's see. Three Moons, Orion's Trifecta. I like that one too. Your son's middle name's Orion. That's cool. Space of Suns. Oh, Waters Between Space and Time. I did like that one. I did like that one. Loyal Nightmare, Vortex. Triple Time Travel, Orion's Paradise, Seasons of the Moon. I like that one, too. Ooh, we could call it Lunar Seasons or something, too. That's great. Portals to Space, Orion's Dream, Orion the Third. I like that one. Eyes of the Universe. Ooh, we could call it the Third Eye. See, somebody said Third Eye. We're on the same page, guys. When you have your Third Eye open, it's like a portal into the universe. You can communicate with the... Uh, Beings across space and time. I know they're all so good. I don't know what to choose. Mm, so freaking neat. Just neat. Triple deja vu. Lunar waters. I like that one too, guys. I wish somebody would buy it so I don't have to choose. <laughs> I've got to choose the title now. Okay, let's see. You're amazing. That's the title. That's it. Beginning, middle, and end of life. I like that. I do sell these masterpieces. You can go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com and get, uh, if you search for number 773, that's this one. So flowing in threes, I like. Triple C suns. I like that. I do like the, let's go with the uh, hypnotic beauty. Give me your, your flowing waters of time one again. What was that one? This one's super cool. Thanks, Bram. I already follow you, Bram. Otherwise, I'd give you a follow for that. Something waters, space waters through time. Or something. What, what, did, what, did, what did she say? I can't remember. We're going to spin the camera around, too, and finish the show here. Is it flipped? Hey, it's flipped. There we go. What's up, Brammy? And everybody? Man, this one turned out so stinking neat. Let's see. Lunar water. The waters between space and time. That's what we're going to go with. I like that. Ooh, there we go. Now, I already numbered this one. 
So I wouldn't have to rush around and try to figure out what stinking number it was. And now we're going to title it. Thank you, Hypnotic Beauty, for that title. One more time. What is it? The Waters? Thank you for pinning it. See, you guys already know. I would have had to come back there and see. All right, let's look over here. The Waters Betwixt. I just love that word. Space. Excellent. Long title, but a good one. Come out there. On the, every, the, the more the, the canvas gets bigger, the bigger my signature gets. Have you guys known that? Uh, seen that? Let's see. 773. Remember, guys, you can guys go find all of my stuff at paintwithjosh.etsy.com. That's my Etsy store. You can go there and guy, buy all the paintings, buy all the shirts. All the merch. You guys want to see this thing flipped around? Do you want to see it? You want to see what we're... What we need to add the birds. Oh, it's true. We do need to add the birds in all three. I just forgot about that. <laughs> it was so... It turned out so good. I was uh, flabbergasted and almost forgot my own signature. Oh, Nelly. There we go. There we go, you guys. Perfection. Now. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez, Morty. Here we go. This one, just, oh, just love it. That's it. I'm off the market, ladies, marrying this painting. My gosh, right? It's almost as big as I am. Say hello to my new girlfriend. Hi, how you doing? Say hello, honey. Okay, perfect. Nice to meet you. Now that you guys have met, let's, uh, let's get the birds in this family. Let's get the birds in this family, I said. What's wrong with my uh, camera? Hang on, you guys are going to go dark for a second. Just real quick. Maybe it's a little dirty. That better? It should be better. All right, let's get some paint. Let's do some birds. And get the stuff. So down for our bottom scene, I'm just going to use white out there on the brush. Out here flying. They got to be very small too. Little teeny tiny guys. About as small as I can make them. Now, up here, we're gonna go green and yellow for the birds. Well, just yellow, actually. I'll just run through that yellow because there's so much green on the canvas already. And what if we stick them, we can make them, so oh, we'll put them up here. And they have to have some sort of, a little bit of dark background to stick off of. So I tend to leave one going, like fading into the dark. Same with this guy. Now we've already got the yellow on the brush. So let's go just a little bit more and move, get a little bit of white, brighten it up smidge. Just a smidge, way out here, coming into the scene. I'll throw the old family. Just like that. That's pretty cool, guys. Now, what we didn't do was kind of highlight this tree in here. So I'm just going to come down, make a few little bits, just a little brighter on that trunk, where maybe it might have caught some light. These little bits, and then we're just going to mix them down in, blend them down. You can always go back over and make it real dark if you didn't like it at all, right? Let's go back and make it dark, but just a couple little bits of just something, something back there, catch our eyeball. And then on this guy, I'm going to carve my initials into the tree trunk right here, just like that. Oh, we need a little bit more white up there. Just like that, we'll have my, my initials into the tree trunk. And I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow to that so it darkens it, that white up. Maybe nobody will ever notice. It's got my initials just carved into the tree. Maybe, maybe somebody will see it. Who knows? Who knows? All right, now I'm actually gonna sign the whole thing. That's not gonna be my signature for the whole painting. We are gonna sign the painting down here in the bottom and uh, try to make it small in comparison to this monster-sized canvas. Let's see. So I hope you guys like this one. I'll show you how to find it on my Etsy store. It's a little expensive, though. I'll tell you ahead of time. It's a little expensive, which is why I think it hasn't sold, but the plan was to take it to the gallery if it didn't sell. So it's just fine. I need some inventory anyway. 
Let's go over here. Okay, guys, perfect. Gosh, I can't wait. I physically can't wait to go take a photo of this and put it out on Facebook and be like, bow, how you like me now? The river will not allow. LL, cool Josh. No? You guys don't know. You guys don't know. <laughs>